Hey everybody, we're back again with our top five issues with knob and tube wiring. Here at Coleman Electrical Services, knob and tube wiring is a big part of our business. We do a tremendous amount of knob and tube rewires um, throughout Massachusetts. And it's just because we happen to live in an area that uh, has old homes. I mean, the amount of older homes in this area is astounding and the amount that still have active knob and tube, knob and tube wiring would absolutely boggle your mind. Now, knob and tube wiring was a first generation of wire ever installed in homes. It was installed, um, it started being installed in about the 1880s and led up to about 1932. Um, in about 1905 or so, uh, BX wiring, which was the second generation of wire, was patented and um, started being used as well by electricians. And it's fun to think about, you know, the electricians at the time had these two uh, very different styles of wire to use. And maybe the older, um, old school ones, you know, stuck with the, stuck with the knob and tube wire, you know, they didn't want to mess with the new stuff. Maybe the new school electricians wanted to use the, the BX wire, and then you definitely had a combination of the two being used simultaneously by some electricians. Now, BX wire, we'll do another video on that at some point, you know, that has its own uh, list of issues. But for this video, we're going to stick to the topic of the issues with knob and tube wiring. And uh, yeah, let's get going into the top five big issues. And our number one, by far, biggest issue with knob and tube wiring is insulation. Knob and tube wiring was run in open air to dissipate heat. And once you have insulation installed around it in your walls and it's packed around the wire, it can no longer dissipate heat the way it was intended and it becomes actually a fire hazard. Now here in Massachusetts, to even have your house insulated, you have to have a electrician sign off that the house has no active knob and tube wiring prior to the insulation being installed. Now this is how this is only for homes obviously that are older. I think their cutoff date is about 1935 or so and older. Any homes older than that, <clears throat> an electrician has to do a sign off, and uh, they give us a form. MassSave gives us a form that actually we fill out that that we're that we're stating that the house is free of uh, active knob and tube. Once that's signed off, you can move forward with the insulation work. Now, if you happen to have active knob and tube where you want to have the insulation installed. Um, you can't do the insulation until the, the knob to wiring is actually completely replaced and that form is signed off at that point. And our number two biggest issue with knob to wiring is insurance companies. A lot of insurance companies will not insure homes that have knob to wiring. So you're left with the choice of either replace the knob to wiring to keep with your same insurance company or find one of the few insurance companies left that will still insure the home. But guess what? That insurance company is definitely going to charge you a premium. It's probably going to be an arm and a leg to insure the home. So you're left with the choice. Do I replace it or do I pay the premium with a different company? That is our, our number two big issue with knob and tube wiring. All right, and our top three biggest issue and the, probably the second most dangerous issue behind the insulation piece is it lacks a ground. Now, Knob to wiring is an ungrounded wiring style that consists of only a single hot wire and a single neutral wire. The ground wiring was brought about late in later years as personnel safety. When I was an apprentice years ago working for my father, um, I think of back in high school when I was just working weekends part time. With him, we got a call from a customer that said they were getting shocked every time they touched their range and their fridge at the same time. So we went out to, there to investigate and sure enough, uh, we took our meter, put it between the, the, um, the shell of both units, and um, we got 120 volts. We were like, holy, what? wow, like, this is something you don't see that often. You know, how is this happening? So upon uh, looking at it a little closer, what had happened was the fridge originally had a two-prong outlet behind it that was powered on a knob and tube, and some electrician or handyman, um, I'm going to say probably a handyman, not an electrician, but, you know, who knows, um, added a an outlet above that outlet and fished a modern real mix wire that had a ground which this is a big no-no you cannot under any circumstances run modern wire or extend off of knob and tube wire with modern wire you can't do it because it's ungrounded and this and this is an example of where where things can go awry so when they when this person installed this outlet they accidentally touched the ground wire to the hot wire in the outlet box so what this does is anything that gets plugged into that outlet that has three prongs, it has a ground prong, now that ground becomes live. And in this case, the fridge frame became live. Now, if that had happened in a grounded wiring style, if that 
wasn't tapped off of knob and tube and it was a Romex wire all the way back to the panel, the breaker would have tripped because there would have been a short circuit. But in this case, because it's a um, ungrounded wiring style, the breaker has no idea and the breaker just stays on and it didn't, wasn't discovered until the tenant just was getting shocked and zapped and he made the call and we came out and fixed it. So great example of a, um, the issue with having no ground. I mean, it's, you can be quite dangerous, especially with people who are manipulating and tapping onto it. And our number four biggest issue with knob and tube wiring is the insulation becomes very brittle. Over time, and we're talking decades later, the insulation breaks down. It was actually a rubber style or rubber based insulation. And when the heat from light bulbs is going into that light fixture box over years and years and years and decades upon decades, it heats up and breaks down. Where it gets even worse is a lot of people take 100 watt light bulbs, put them into light fixtures that should only have 60 watt bulbs. And if you've ever felt the heat that comes out of a 100 watt incandescent or halogen light bulb, it's pretty intense. And it, all that heat goes right into the wiring compartment and it literally cooks the wires. The other issue is older light fixtures. If you still have some older ones up with these 100 watt light bulbs in them, the older fixtures don't have insulation in them to protect the wiring compartment like a modern uh, fixture would. So I don't know if you've ever done this, but we would do this all the time where we go to replace a light fixture um, and we pull the light down and sure enough, the wire is literally, the insulation is literally falling apart. It's like you touch it and it just breaks apart into dust and you're left with bare wire. And now it's an absolute nightmare to repair it because you basically don't have to replace the wire to it because it's just completely gone. So brittle wire, um, brittle insulation, that is our, our number four. And our number five top uh, biggest issue with knob and tube wiring is it's old. I mean, geez, you heard me say it was first put in the homes in the 1880s up to 1932. And believe me, I'm no mathematician, but in this year today, 2021, it could be at its oldest 140 years old and at, at, at its youngest 90 years old, between 140 and 90 years old, if you still have it in your home today. It's amazing that it's lasted this long, and it's really a testament to the electricians who installed it all those years ago. But it certainly um, served its use, and it's time to move on from it and get a safer, grounded system in your home. If you guys enjoyed this video today, please take a look at our website. We have tons of free information on there about all the issues with knob and tube wiring, how to install it, where the holes have to be made. Yes, holes do have to be made in most cases to fish the wire through your house and where they need to be made and some examples of that. We have all that information on our website. We even have a frequently asked questions uh, form in our blog. Definitely take a look at that. And if you want even more information, I wrote a book called A Homeowner's Guide to Knob and Tube Wiring. That's for sale on Amazon in ebook and paperback uh, versions, as well as you can get it on Google Play. This book really covers from soup to nuts everything you would need to know as a homeowner about knob and tube wiring, about hiring an electrician to do it, how it's priced, what expectations you should have, and really a guide to picking out an electrician contractor that does this kind of work all the time and isn't posing. Because believe me, this is a specialized business um, if you take an electrical or electrician that's usually doing commercial work or isn't used to this kind of work, is used to maybe building new homes and they're going to try to do this kind of work, it's not going to go well. They're probably going to destroy your house and smash holes all over the place and leave you in an absolute nightmare of a disaster. So really, you got to be careful on picking out the right electrician to do this kind of work. It's a specialized thing. And um, yeah, please take a look at our website. And uh, if you get a chance, take a look at the books and um, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.